These are choke cherries. These are the black ones and there's red ones. I don't know if there's any difference, but the, the black ones seem to be better. They make better jelly or whatever. Mostly jelly or syrup. We've made choke cherry syrup. And uh, that keeps for the winter. And, the, and sometimes they used to do the whole choke cherry and just eat it like that for winter. So we pick them in any time in August. Usually they're already in August and then we just pick enough to do us for the winter. My family was a big family, so we'd done a lot of berries. The choke cherries were one of the last berries, besides the niece, the cranberry. The inner bark is really good for coughs and colds. Like you scrape the top part and then you go on the inner bark of the tree and then you scrape that off and dry that and then it's good for coughs and colds in the winter time. A lot of them just take the whole little branch now and store it for winter. It's easier than you soak it and simmer it and then use it for coughs or colds. That's all the choke cherries, red ones, black ones, and then the pin cherries. They're like they're on a close pin, the pin cherries, and they're bright, bright red and not as big as the choke cherries. If you don't want to use syrup, you can put in a few crab apples so it'll set like a jelly. And the one cup of uh, juice, I use one cup of sugar. We're making choke cherry syrup. <laughs> Pick berries, clean them, put them in a pot, add enough water to level top of the berries, then you boil it. A good 30 minutes boil, then you strain it. Usually we strain it overnight, but here we're tick, 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 and around the clock. Okay, I'm straining the these cooked choke cherries to get all the juice out of it. After we get all the juice strained, we measure it back in the pot and then we add the sugar. We wait for it to boil and then we add the sugar to it. After we measure the sugar, a hot job, this one here. And I'll just leave that there for a bit to let it to drip. I'm trying to get all the flavor out of it. The job here now is to measure this. And this is not normally what we do at home. We'd give it time to drip and drip and drip, let it strain overnight. Now that's six cups of juice there. On my recipe, 12 cups of sugar. That's two cups of uh, sugar to each cup of juice. And doing it this way helps. The jars are hot. We fill it with hot liquids and we put the lids on and it, uh, it seals a lot better that way. Turn in on the other burner so that I can get this uh, juice boiling so that I can add the sugar to it. See, I've got six cups of juice here. I'll put 12 cups of sugar in it. I had a an elder that swore up and down when he felt like he had a cold. He'd rob his wife's choke cherry syrup and drink that for cough syrup. I don't know how well that worked, but he swore up and down that it worked for him. So, so as some people can try if they can't get to the store to get Buckley's. I'm putting in the Certo now that it's starting to boil. The Certo just adds to the jelly, kind of a thickener to the juice. How was our jars doing? Well, it's been boiling, but very slow, but now it's starting to boil. Just turning the heat down. You scrape the foam off as much as possible. I strained it, measured the juice, reboiled it, measured the the sugar, added to it and got a good rolling boil. Then I added some surtout, so, so it's 
pros and cons with the surgical. Whether you use it or you don't, it depends on who the cook is. So I just used it today too and let that boil. In the meantime, the jars were being washed and heated in the oven there or in the dishwasher. And then we filled them while they were still boiling, we filled them into the jars. Put the jar lids in the meantime, we're soaking in hot water. Put those on, screwed on the tops. And voila, we're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs>